Hello guys, welcome to the second episode of PeopleSoft HRMS tutorial. Today we will continue where we left off in our previous episode. Just a quick recap of what we have done so far. In this tutorial, we are implementing PeopleSoft HRMS for a hypothetical company called Bob Candy Corp. We have logically divided our company into three separate divisions based on the product they sell. And to track transactions for candy division, I have created a new business unit and set ID. Using the new set ID, we created location for our company. Then we created our actual company in our PeopleSoft system. After that, we created our first department, which is finance for our company. Down the road, we are going to hire CEO of our company through this department. And then finally, we enabled HRMS features that we plan to implement for our company in the PeopleSoft installation table. This is what we have done so far in our previous episode. In case if you missed it, I'll drop the link to my previous video in the description below. In this episode, we will kick off payroll setup, which means we will be creating earning code, pay group. After that, we will go through some important configuration pages that PeopleSoft uses to calculate payroll taxes. After that, we will set the stage to run payroll processes for our company, which means we will be creating balance ID, parent ID, and finally pay calendar. We will go through each and every concept in easy to understand language. By the end of this episode, we will have everything in place to run the first payroll for our company. That's my agenda for today, guys. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Now let's define different ways an employee can make money through our company. We configure that in PeopleSoft using earnings code table. I will navigate to setup HCM, product related, payroll for North America and compensation and earnings earnings table. Just to get idea, let's take a look at existing earnings codes. This is like regular earnings, shift overtime earnings, overtime straight. These are the different ways an employee is making money through our company. Let's define a brand new earnings code. In order to do that, I will click add a new value. Let's define our earning code as Bob full-time staff. I will add the earnings code. As usual, let's update the effective date. Let's give some description. For the payment type, we can specify how we are going to pay for this earnings code. Are we going to pay for hours or outright flat amount or we can choose either hours or amount. I'm going to choose the very first option. We can enable retro pay for this earnings code. For example, if there is any pay rate increase, do you want the system to apply it retroactively or the time that has already passed? Let's navigate to taxes tab. Here, we are going to specify how taxes are calculated for our earnings code. For the tax method, we are going to specify here whether the system should calculate it annualized or cumulative, etc. For earnings, do you want to add the payments received through this earnings code to the gross pay? That's what we specify here. Next, are the payments received through this earnings code subject to garnishments or court order? That we can enable here. Let's not enable it in our case since we are focusing on fundamentals. Here you can specify if the payments through this earning code is subject to federal withholding tax and do you want to withhold federal withhold tax. We have a few other options, please explore at your own pace. Let's navigate to the next tab. When multiple earning codes apply to the same employee, we can specify how payroll calculation should prioritize the calculation process based on earnings calc sequence that we specify here. We can multiply the earnings received through this earning code by changing the multiplication factor here. I will keep the default value here. 
the rest of the configuration I will keep as is. That's it guys, I will go ahead and save our earnings code. We just created one earnings code. What we will do next is, we will group some specific earning codes together through earnings program ID. Then we are going to assign this earnings program as default to a specific set of employees. Let's go ahead and do that. This is where we create our earnings program ID. Let's go ahead and create a brand new earnings program ID. I will click on add a new value. Let's give a name to our program ID. I will click on add button. Updated the effective date. Let's give some description. Let's add a couple of earning codes under this group and the one which we created just before. For holiday payment, let's use the existing earnings code. For overtime, let's use this code. I'll go ahead and save our earnings program ID. To facilitate payroll processing for its employees, a company divides its employees into different groups. They are called pay groups. For example, all full-time employees are paid under one pay group. Part-time employees are paid in a different pay group. Even though I mentioned just one criteria, there are several other criteria involved. I hope you got the point. Now let's go ahead and create a new pay group for our company. To create a new pay group, we have to navigate to Setup HCM, Product Related, Payroll for North America, Payroll Processing Controls, Pay Group Table. Let's add a new value. Our company name is Bob. Let's name our pay group B Bob Pay Group. I'll click on Add button. First, let's fix the effective date. If you have recruited an employee for a specific shift, you have to define that shift under this set ID. Let me show you. I will open a new window. To define shift, we have to navigate to Setup HCM, Product Related, Payroll for North America, Compensation and Earnings, Shift Table. One important thing to remember is, even though shift is not applicable to an employee, you have to define not applicable in the setup under this specific set ID. Since there is already an existing setup for the shift, let's use this set ID in our pay group. Let me go ahead and update it to share. Let's give some description to our pay group. Let's give currency. We are going to pay monthly for this pay group. Let me update the pay frequency to monthly. If you notice, we have to configure almost nine pages, one to three pages, four to six, and pages seven to nine. Let's go ahead and complete the configuration for pages one to three. Here we can check if we want to continue the payroll processing, if there are any errors. I'll select S, yes. employee type, I will say salaried. Calculation parameters. Here we will specify what earning codes payroll calculation process should use to calculate earnings. Here we can specify the default earnings program for this pay group. Let's update it to the earnings program that we created in the earlier step. And holiday schedule, let's give an existing holiday schedule, USA holiday schedule. Let's update the earnings code for regular hours with the one that we created earlier. Likewise, we will update the regular earnings. Let's keep the existing earning codes for overtime and holiday. For this demo, we are not assigning any benefit program. Now let's navigate to pages four to six. When pay sheets are created by PeopleSoft system, how do you want to sequence them? Let me select employee only. Salaried proration rule. If employee joined in the middle of the year, here we can specify how salary should be prorated. Using work schedule, we can specify which days are working days for our pay group. In our current setting, Monday to Friday are working days, Saturday and Sunday are non-working days. Automatic pay sheet update, this is very important setting. Once you check this flag and make any changes to the employee job data, after pay sheet has been created, payroll process will automatically update the pay sheet by taking the new changes into consideration. 
Let's navigate to check distribution. I will keep the default options. Check sequencing. Again, I will keep the default options. Now let's configure pages 7 to 9. I will not do any changes here. I will navigate to bank information. Here you have to specify from which bank account you are planning to pay for this specific pay group. Now let me show you a way to define this banking information. I'll click on new window. Let's navigate to setup HCM, common definitions, banking, source bank accounts. You can add a new value and create your own bank account. For now, let's leverage the bank account that I have already created. I have created this bank ID ahead of time. Let's use this bank ID. So I will update the US bank one that I already created. I will use the same bank ID for direct deposits. And the net minimum pay, let's add $1. And the maximum payment made under this pay group, I will make it 30K. I will go ahead and save our pay group. That's it guys, this is how to create a new pay group. Now let's go through some important pages that PeopleSoft uses to calculate payroll taxes. In order to show you the setup page, I will navigate to Setup HCM, Product Related, Payroll for North America, Federal and State Taxes, Tax Table. Since our company is located in DC, let's see the tax rates for DC. This is the allowance amount for DC. If we go to rates, this is based on this table the rates are calculated and these rates are updated if there are any changes through tax updates. Now let's take a look at federal tax rates. If you search for dollar $U based on the standard deductions that are specified here and as well as the rates that are configured on this page, federal taxes are calculated for employees. In order to withhold state taxes, we have to do an additional configuration, company state tax table. Let me click on it. Our company is Bob and we are located in DC. And let's add a new value, add, and let's update the effective date to 9-1-2021. Let's update state employer ID. Let me go ahead and save our page and we are done with the state tax setup. This concludes tax configuration. We are almost there guys. Soon we are going to wrap up our payroll setup. Now let's configure one last step. We have to create pay calendar for our pay group. By the way, what is this pay calendar? Pay calendar is used to schedule pay cycles for our pay groups. In other words, it decides how often a company pays its employees who belong to a specific pay group. In order to create pay calendar, we have to do three steps. Step number one, we have to create balance ID. Balance ID defines pay period. We need to provide begin date, end date, and it creates cycles for our payroll processing. Next, we have to create parent ID. Using parent ID, we can run payroll for multiple pay groups at once. Lastly, we have to run a process to build pay calendar. Now let's perform each one of these steps one by one. In order to configure balance ID, we have to navigate to Setup HCM, Product Related, Payroll for North America, Payroll Processing Controls, Balance ID Table. Let's add a new value. Our set ID is CNDY. And let's balance ID is calendar year. Let's add using this balancing ID. As you can see here, system maintains balances for taxes, earnings, deductions, check balances, etc. We have to create at least one balance ID for calendar year. This specific flag signifies if this balance ID is for calendar year. Let's add a description for our balance ID. Let's add entries for calendar year 2021. Likewise, let's add entries for calendar year 2022. All right, as you can see, we have entry for each month for the year 2021 as well as 2022. 
we will associate this specific balance id to our pay group which means we plan to process payments monthly to our pay group and if we navigate to balance id table 2 we have a total of eight periods which are grouped quarterly all right let me go ahead and save our balance id in order to process payroll for our company we have to create payroll id to create payroll id we have to navigate to payroll table i will click on add a new value here i will provide the name for payroll id since i plan to process my first payroll for october i will give a name relevant to that and now i will click on add button as you can see here this is a grid using this single parent id you can process payroll for multiple pay groups you are not yet seeing pay groups here because we have not yet created pay calendar that's our next step once that is done i will come back here and show you the pay group should be populated for now let's go ahead and save our parent id to process payroll for our company the next step in the process is to create pay calendar data to create pay calendar data let's navigate to the same folder now i will click on create pay calendars and let's give a name to our run control id and we are going to create pay calendar for our company bob we plan to create pay calendar for our pay group so i will select our pay group here you need to specify pay period end date for your first payroll since i plan to process my first payroll on october i have selected october 31st let's give paycheck date one day after pay period end date now i'll go ahead and run the process the process ran to success and if we open the log trace we can see pay calendar data was built successfully to view the calendar data we can navigate to pay calendar table and let's search using our company as you can see pay calendar entries were created for this calendar year let's open calendar entry for october i will assign the parent id that we created earlier this is a required step to process payroll i will save now let's navigate back to parent table and if we open our parent id as you can see our company's pay group data is now populated now you can repeat the same process by creating pay calendar for a different pay group now i will navigate back to create pay calendars all you need to do this time is use a different pay group and create pay calendar after you repeat the same process then you will see a different pay group under the same payroll id bottom line is we are trying to run payroll for multiple pay groups at once using payroll id with this we have successfully completed payroll setup for our company in the next episode i am going to show you the core hrms setup which means we will be creating person then we will be converting that person into an employee along the way we will be creating job position compensation rate and finally we will kick off the first payroll for our company i'm all excited guys to share you all this cool stuff with you next week Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.